this video, I will describe Vega and Theta charts in Voland. It may seem like an odd pairing to do Vega and Theta together, but these two Greeks involve the same aspect of an option price, which is the premium. A portion of the premium of an option is attributed to time, and another portion is attributed to the implied volatility. The implied volatility, or IV, of an option is determined by supply and demand of that option and the smooth math of the options surrounding it on the chain, both from a timing and strike aspect. In that way, these two Greeks are related, and I found it was easier to categorize these together when it comes to looking at Voland. Vega is the response of an options PNL to changes in implied volatility. Implied volatility is pithily called the catch-all of an option price. If it cannot be explained by underlying price or the passage of time, it is thrown into the implied volatility bucket. In a sense, that is true. Time has a specific expiration, and a historical distribution can define the probability of a strike being reached. What is left is implied volatility, which is determined by the supply and demand of the option. Implied volatility would also include event volatility. Market makers are not dumb. They do know that corporate earnings, economic reports, and FOMC meetings create volatility. Therefore, even if no one hedges, they will inject some additional premium into the option price to make sure they are hedged for the event. Because the market has more of a chance for something bad to happen when there is more time until expiration, the Vega impact is larger with more days until expiration. This is the thesis behind time spreads or calendars, when a closer term option is sold versus a longer term one at the same strike. Theta is the response of an options PL to the passage of one day in time. This calculation can be shortened to any time frame, but the default is a day's passage, and that is the time frame that is used in Voland. As time passes, each day has a growing exponential effect on PL. This is because, for example, if there's four days left and one day passes, that's 25% of the days left that have just passed. If there are 100 days left and one passes, that's only 1%. So the growth pattern of theta is the opposite of Vega, where the closer you are to expiration, the more time decay you can expect. Theta is kind of seen as the price of gamma. If you want convexity, then you must pay a bit more than the minimum. It is the price that makes it worth selling exponential returns. It is not free money. Many option gurus out there will tell you that Theta is a way of making income because of a CBOE paper released in the early 2000s showing strong risk-adjusted returns of selling puts. A standard put selling strategy was formed and made into the put index, which outperformed the S&P 500 from its inception in 2007 to 2014, when the S&P 500 strong bull market started. Then the S&P started rising more than the premiums collected on the puts, and the put index underperformed the SPX. You can see the paper titled Historical Performance of Put Writing Strategies 2019 by Professor Oleg Bondarenko of the CBOA. So now looking at the Volan dashboard, the Vega and Theta exposures look obscenely high. In SPY, it looks like 1.6 billion. In SPX, it would look worse. 1.6 trillion. <laughs> the numbers are correct, but the difference is the total premium needs to be considered since the P&L of Vega and Theta are not based on moves in the underlying, hence the large number. But this is why the cumulative sheet only shows one number for cumulative vega and theta. When we calculate for the summary sheet, vana and charm, which is the relationship of vega and theta respectively to delta, what we do is we assume that 85% of the vega and the theta is already hedged. The way I came to that number is basically with talks with former market makers so essentially, we use 85% of this number as being already hedged. So 15% is not hedged with moves in implied volatility. What would I use these sheets for, vega and theta? Essentially, I would be using it to determine what the position of dealers are or even what the position of customers are. So if the dealers are negative theta, that means the customers are short gamma, which means they have sold more than they have bought in total options. Then you could see in Vega that they are highly exposed 
in longer expirations. Also, as a side note, Vega is hedged not through the underlying, not through shares. They are hedged through futures, VX futures, forward realized variance swaps, or equity swaps. So this will just tell you how much Vega needs to be unwound, especially if you select near-term dated expirations. So it's only 15% of 5 billion would need to be unwound, which is not that significant. Further though, the unwinding of Vega hedges doesn't even guarantee that it will move the equity itself any significant amount. But it is a decent indicator of positioning and would theoretically help predict implied volatility moves in that equity. It could also help show the net positioning of customers. So from this, again, you can help determine what the aggregate customer book looks like. And since customers do not hedge in accordance with their option position, you may be able to see weaknesses in customer position. But it does require some nuance in reading these exposure sheets and maybe some studying over time in order to be able to determine that. Thanks for watching this video and may Volland help you find success in your trading ventures.